Hey everyone, welcome to Spiritual Royale, our new series where we're looking at the spiritual battle that we're in. And, and last week, if you tuned in, you would have heard Christine uh, kind of just give us some context around Ephesians 6, which is the main passage we're going to be looking at. And, and she really pointed out for us that we're in a spiritual battle against Satan and his forces. And it's really important that we are fighting fit and that we have armor to equip ourselves with in this battle. So over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at this armor and, and how to get uh, fighting fit. But I want us today just to take a moment to pause. And, and I want us to really today understand and realize how serious this battle is and what kind of battle it is that we're fighting. Now, a lot of you guys are playing this game called Fortnite. Um, for those of you who don't, it's a battle royale game. And basically, you enter into this fantasy world and you equip yourself with, with gear. And it's essentially survival of the fittest. Um, I've never played Fortnite myself. I've played a bit of Call of Duty. So I understand the battle royale kind of scene. And it is so much fun. And, and I, don't know, I don't know if it's because of all the gear that you can get or because of the competitive element. Or, or maybe it's just the fact that we know that it's not real. Like you can smash people, kill them, be killed, and you'll wake up in the morning and you'll be fine. But, but we need to understand today that we are in a battle royale of sorts. And it is serious. And we have three formidable enemies in this battle. Satan and his forces, the sin in our hearts, and the world around us that is anti-Jesus is doing everything in their power to take us out of the game early, to make sure that we don't last, to make sure that they outlast us. To illustrate the, the kind of battle that we're in, I, I want to tell you a story today about four teenagers. In the year 597, King Nebuchadnezzar, we'll just call him King Neb for short from Babylon, decided to attack the city of Jerusalem. But it's very interesting because when he got to Jerusalem, he didn't wipe everybody out. What he did is he took a bunch of the Israelites back with him to Babylon. And these four teenagers... Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were taken along to Babylon. And when they got to Babylon, um, the king chose certain people to serve him as his personal servants or slaves. And these four teenage boys were amongst that elite group. But we need to stop at this moment and ask ourselves why King Neb decided to not wipe these Israelites out completely when he had the chance? Why did he keep these people as slaves? Why did he track them all the way along to Babylon? You see, this was part of his strategy. Babylon was a thriving metropolis. It was a diverse, progressive city. There were various kind of pagan gods that were worshipped. It was the place to be. And King Neb's strategy in this battle was not to wipe out these Jews, but to slowly convert them to become as Babylonian as possible. He wanted them to wear the clothes that the Babylonians wore, eat the food that the Babylonians ate, worship the gods that the Babylonians worshipped. His strategy in winning this war was to slowly get these Jews to turn their backs on the God that they worshipped. These Israelites were treated so well that they didn't even realize they were in a battle. But slowly but surely, they were being influenced to become more and more Babylonian and less and less Jewish. You see, the thing is, guys, we're in a battle that is exactly like this. We look around us and we don't think we're in a battle because we don't see bullets flying around. We, we don't see bloodshed. But slowly, surely, we are being influenced by Satan, by sin, by our post-Christian secular culture to become more and more like the world. To, to turn our eyes away from Jesus. To be influenced to follow other things. Our phones, Netflix, 
YouTube, the selfies that we take, the image on social media, that boy, that girl, pornography. There are so many things that the enemy is using to grab our hearts, to grab our attention, to get our focus off of following Jesus. And we don't think that these, thing, th these things are damaging us, but we are slowly but surely being turned away, being pulled away from the God that we say that we love. And this is serious. I was very uh, shocked the other day to read a stat by a group called Barna in, the, in, in America who kind of do research on young people. And they came out with this, this stat and they said that only 11% of teenagers who are following Jesus today will be following Jesus by the time they are adults. That means for every nine of you watching this Tuesday Truth, only one of you will be serving God when you are an adult. I, I read, in, I watch Instagram and, and Facebook and, and all these social media platforms and, and it just breaks my heart to see teenagers who were once in our youth ministry, who, who just seem to, by the things they post, not be walking with God anymore. Slowly but surely becoming more and more Babylonian. Slowly but surely drifting away from Jesus. Guys, we need to realize that we are in a serious spiritual royale. It is no joke. So I want to ask you today, how are you going to respond? Because in the story of Daniel, what we see is that Daniel and his friends figure out the strategy of King Neb. And they realize that unless they take a stand, they are going to be influenced. And so they do some radical things. They don't eat the food of the Babylonians. When there's a law passed that, that no one can pray to God, Daniel and his friends continue to pray. They will not bow down and worship the gods of Babylon. And they pay for it. We know the story. They get thrown in a lion's den. They get thrown in a furnace. They persecuted. But they realize the seriousness of the battle for their hearts. So what kind of st stand are you going to take if you are serious about following Jesus? What kind of idols are you going to cast aside? Is your devotion going to be for your iPhone or is your devotion going to be for Jesus? So over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at this battle and we're going to be looking, about, looking at ways that we can equip ourselves to fight against the strategy of the enemy. God bless you guys. Have an awesome week. Cheers.